What's the latest that you have? I know your phone's been blowing up. I know you're still working this story. What's the latest that you can add to this developing story? Well, from what I understand, this meeting, you know, this is not, you know, we're all finding out about this today, but the Cavs have known about this for more than a week. And so this is something that they've been working through. LeBron has known about it for more than a week. And one thing you have to realize about Kyrie Irving, he signed this contract that he is on back in 2014 mm -hmm. before LeBron came back to Cleveland. When he signed this deal, guys, he was presented with the scenario, hey, we're going to build around you. We're going to build like another Phoenix Suns here. David Griffin had just been named the GM. David Blatt had just been named the coach. They sat and they met and they said, you're going to be our guy. You're going to be our Steve Nash. And LeBron arrived two weeks later. And over the course of the last couple of years, Kyrie has talked about this, guys, as recently as a month ago, has talked about the, 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 the balance that he's had to make between wanting to be selfish, wanting to be the centerpiece star and wanting to play alongside a transcendent player and win championships. And so this is something he's gone back and forth on. And in the wake of David Griffin, who he was very close with leaving the organization, he apparently has decided that he doesn't want to go the LeBron route anymore. Well, the line, and you and Woj co-authored this story on ESPN.com, the line that made me jump out of my chair was third to last paragraph that Irving considered requesting a trade following the Cavs championship last season but decided against it. So this has been festering for a while, but he said all the right things last year about sacrificing for the team. So was he just putting on a, a happy face when really all along he's just been ready to get out of there as soon as possible? What is it about now? Is it the absence of David Griffith? Or does he know something about LeBron's future where he says, you know what? LeBron's actually not leaving after this year, so let me get up out of here. What's his thinking there? Here's the thing. Nobody knows what LeBron's going to do a year from now. LeBron James doesn't even know. Okay. So nobody really can, can bank anything on that. Here's what I think you just need to realize. His number one idol, the man that he respects above all other, other than his father, Kobe. is Kobe Bryant. Yep. When the Cavs won the championship um, two years ago, or a year ago, he came back to the locker room. You know what he did? He FaceTimed Kobe from the winning locker room. So... He sees himself in the mold of Kobe. And whether or not, this isn't exactly like Kobe Shaq, but Michael, this was something that I was thinking could be a possibility down the line with Kyrie and LeBron. I, I was certainly keeping my eye on it. But, but Kyrie gave an interview, two interviews really. One, the night that the Cavs won the title, I mean the uh, Eastern Conference title, and then another one right before the finals where he talked about this conflict that he's had in between them. And he said... I mean, I have the quotes in my story that I ran today. Um, I, I'd, he said, I'd rather know that I'm competing for a championship with LeBron than be up at 3 in the morning wondering what the direction of my franchise is going to be. And maybe that's something he told himself to get through it. Right. And maybe he's just changed his mind on that. And we'll say this. He hasn't been traded yet. He, th 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 he could change his mind. Now, uh, when do Wait, you Kyrie could change his mind? He hasn't been traded yet. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is... Him coming and meeting with the Cavs is a pretty final step. But I, I want to point out, the Cavs have three options here. One, they don't have to trade him. He's under contract for two more years. This is the, the route the Lakers went with Kobe back in 2007 mm -hmm. <laughs> when he demanded a trade. Um, they just said, hey, we're going to work through it. And they ended up winning two more titles. They just didn't honor his trade demand. Or they could trade him for young players and draft picks. Or they could trade him for veterans. Um, but it's also possible that, like Kobe, uh, Kyrie could change his mind. But, you know, the Cavs have known this for seven, eight, ten days and yeah. have not traded him, and the news didn't get out, so they weren't exactly out there on the, on the, on the phone. But when, but when Kobe wanted out, Shaq, wasn't, he, Shaq was already gone. And so what I'm saying is, how do you walk this back? Like, if you're Kyrie, it's one thing to want out before to get out like this. How do, you, how do, you, how do they not honor the request as it relates to just the chemistry or the functionality? Or, I know LeBron, who knows what he's going to do, so if you're the Cavs, aren't you kind of between a rock and a hard place here? You got him under contract for three more years, obviously with the player option. But now that this is out there, can you realistically bring him back into this situation? Nothing is impossible in the NBA. But, I mean, I think it's more likely that he gets traded. I'm just saying that Kyrie has had a conflict gotcha. with this situation in his head. And he's talked about it. Think, you know, think about how much he spent time talking about it. My guess is he's probably consul he's consulted Kobe on just about everything he's done. 
My guess is this didn't catch Kobe by surprise. It did catch LeBron James by surprise. Well, I was going to ask you that next, Wendy. You wrote that LeBron was blindsided, and, and, and I think you said on PTI that devastated. he was devastated. Yeah. That was the, the term that you used. Uh, if, if you're LeBron James and you and, you and Kyrie have sort of been uh, through this journey together and LeBron has been trying to mentor him, uh, where does this leave their relationship? Because as Mike said, now that this has been exposed, right. How is LeBron James supposed to feel about having Kyrie Irving as a teammate? Well, <laughs> wherever Kyrie gets traded, we may have a new Christmas Day game. Because <laughs> I, I really... Is, is playing with LeBron easy? No. Is having LeBron in your franchise easy at times? No. But what most teams would tell you, his teammates in the past or his front offices or his coaches, is that the positives outweigh the negatives. That, yes... He can, you know, he can subtweet you, that he can, you know, bark at you in a huddle, that he can, um, you know, make you feel a little bit lower than you are. I mean, ask Kevin Love. My God, nobody's gone through anything like that. But that, you know, generally you would think that there's this positive. And LeBron and Kyrie spoke very positively yeah. about each other in June. Yeah. We're only in July. We're, I'm not going back to an interview from 2015 and trying to, to tug it to make it fit the narrative here. There are quotes from Kyrie in June about wanting to stay together. In fact, when I heard those quotes, I said to myself, you know what, that concern that I had about Kyrie maybe wanting to get away from LeBron, maybe I'll put that on the back burner. And I actually thought maybe if LeBron left in a year and walked away from the Cavs, maybe that would be the window for Kyrie. Maybe right. that would be sort of in a way a gift to Kyrie to say thank you for being my running mate now. I, I'm going to... And, you know, Cleveland wouldn't look at it that way, but it, it left LeBron in the position to do that. So I'm puzzled by the timing of it, especially since we're literally four or five weeks off Kyrie talking about how he'd embrace this situation.